Angie Coombs, The Waterfall Journey. The Waterfall Journey Workbook, Study 8, Understanding Our Stories. God created us in his image, and because the source of all life was in the Father's presence in Eden, there were no needs. The fallen world changes that. Now we all suffer pain and distortion, arising from the thirst of living in less than perfect circumstances. Being willing to work through the damage thus caused, God's way, allows step-by-step restoration towards wholeness and transforms us back to our unique original design. The waterfall of the Father's presence brought absolute love, connection, alignment and identity. In heart-to-heart, spirit-to-spirit communication, in the confidence of being utterly loved and filled with living water, man's identity was rooted in God. This relationship can be seen in Genesis 1 and 2. In this place of abiding, there is absolute trust between God and man. The contrast after the fall is seen in Genesis 3, where life is driven by the ego and the need to survive amidst broken relationships, leading inevitably to the distortion of man's image. As we walk through life, we are molded by our history, traumas, circumstances, and relationships. These impact our inner world, our thinking, feeling, and choices. Our identity is then built on what we believe the world thinks of us, It is a place of spiritual thirst. The first task is to read again Genesis 1 to 3. And then, how do we begin to understand our stories? Our stories are very important to God. See Psalm 139. For when our stories are transformed, they will be a deep reservoir of blessing to be poured out for the kingdom purposes. For it is with the comfort we receive that we will comfort others. Life in the fallen world is a bruising affair and our stories may not feel like a blessing at the moment for they have been lived out in hazardous circumstances. Consequently, our images have become distorted by sin anger, fear and shame. But this is why we all need God's intervention to accept the cross and to accept the Holy Spirit's ministry. God has trusted us with our stories and knows when and how to transform the pain and set us free. There are many ways to help the process of healing, but when they're led by God, Recovery is sustained and with timing that is significant. It is good to remind ourselves at this stage that God values our stories so much that Jesus died for us to be able to bring them before the throne of the Father and actively and meaningfully into God's story. More, the Father wants us home, basking in his absolute love. So how do you know when a period of healing is about to begin? Often, you are already alerted by an over-the-top emotional response. You might be surprised by the intensity of a reaction, so that you say to yourself, where did that come from? That is the question to put to the Holy Spirit and follow it up with, Lord, help me. Is there something here that you're trying to show me? It is our willingness to let God deal with the dark within us that is the key. Will you let the Holy Spirit 
deal with your pain. If you turn and face Jesus, you can be sure that some healing will follow. The healing process always brings double benefits. Firstly, you know you're going to be healed of something that has been a shadow in your inner life. And secondly, the actual process that the Holy Spirit takes you through is part of your equipping. God deals with our transformation piece by piece. It is the sanctification process. Once the Holy Spirit has highlighted the beginning of a phase of healing, he will bring to light things that are relevant, often memories long forgotten will pop into your mind. He will orchestrate circumstances and the experiences that he will speak through, enabling you to collect the clues to help you understand your story. Believing and obeying what comes into your head and heart will begin you on the journey of building a relationship and trust in the Holy Spirit. He will travel at your speed. Our part is to be willing to let him move in our being and lives. Now we're going to look at the tools to help us collect the clues about our story that are relevant to the Holy Spirit's interest. But let me begin with the caution. As we explore these tools, we need to make sure that we only respond to the Holy Spirit's leading. That means that we do not go digging into our past or present difficulties, but wait for the Holy Spirit to bring to the surface what he wants to deal with. It will be the thing at the front of your mind that is troubling you, or a surprising reaction, a difficult feeling. If nothing is ruffling you, don't dig. At the right time, the Holy Spirit will address what is necessary. When you are aware of an issue, ask the Holy Spirit to show you what it's all about and just follow where he leads you, knowing that what he starts, he finishes and healing or understanding will come. But don't drive, await the leading. It has to be said that many people will not embark on the journey to inner healing because they will not face the pain. However, we all know from our own experience of physical pain that an untreated wound that is ignored can produce far worse pain. The effort of trying to carry on life and ignore a wound is both draining and can lead to much more serious consequences. The only way to safely deal with physical wounds is to treat them. So it is with our emotional wounds. And when we understand that we start picking up many of these in early childhood and that they have festered and been reinforced over the years, we begin to see that we are all in need of some measure of inner healing. The Holy Spirit knows exactly how to deal with our inner pain. He knows the what, the how and the when. So let us look at particular tools we can employ under the Holy Spirit's direction. Tool two is the timeline. Whenever you need an overview of your life, drawing a timeline can be significant. We're often alerted to the next stage of our healing by experiencing emotional pain. This pain is God's red flag in the minefield to alert us to a wound buried within us that is in need of healing now. We need to learn to recognize the moment. Then is the right time to do this following exercise, going through the steps to drawing a timeline. Step one, sit down and relax. Ask for the Holy Spirit's oversight. On an A4 sheet of paper, in landscape layout, draw a line halfway down the page and across from left to right. 
Starting from the left edge as the time of your birth, plot the events of your life as they come into your mind. The right edge of the paper is now. Don't think too hard. Let the events come to you. Essentially, you're not writing down all the events of your life, but you're allowing the Holy Spirit to bring what is relevant for the matter in hand now. Step two, plot the events like a hospital chart. Place a dot for each event and a label to identify it for you. Put positive events above the line and negative events below the line. Differentiate by degree, highlights and low points. Join the dots to reveal the pattern of your life. Step 3. Take only as long as you need, but do not keep going back to the timeline. I usually suggest not more than 40 minutes. Each time you do a timeline, it will be subtly different. Yes, the major milestones will be there, but the Holy Spirit will release memories to you of significant events that are pertinent to the work that he's doing in you at this moment. So each timeline will be different. Step 4. Sit with your timeline and reflect with the Holy Spirit. What do you feel as you look down on the overview of your life that is presented? Can you see links and patterns of behaviour? A revealing question is, have I ever felt like this before? Ask God what he wants you to see. It can be an emotional moment to look down on your life. What are you feeling? Be aware of what is going on inside of you. Journaling your thoughts can be helpful. Understanding our stories and being aware of the impact on who we are and who we feel ourselves to be is necessary as the baseline from which we begin our journey of recovery. We are complicated people and the more we become aware of how we have coped with the pressures and strains of life and the damage that has been inflicted, the more we can cooperate with the Holy Spirit as he untangles the mess and sets us free. This self-awareness will help us minister to others after our healing. This occupation and education questionnaire may also prove to be helpful as you reflect further on your story. 1. Name the three most important adults in your life before the age of 16. 2. Reflect on what happened in your early family life that affected you. Where were the tensions? Were money, stability, illness, relationships, work, school, drink or drugs issues? How would you characterize your early years? Three. How was school for you? What type of school was it? Think about your role models, choices of subjects. What was best at school? What was the worst thing? Was school a safe place? Four, did you achieve what you hoped for at school? If not, what hindered you? What attitude did you have to school? Were you comfortable with your peer group? What was the atmosphere? 5. How did you choose what came next? Was it what you wanted? 6. How satisfying was your work life? What thrills you and what disappoints you about your working years? 7. Did you have more than one job? Why did you leave? 
What is an advance or a setback? Eight. What was your measure of success? Money? Status? Family? Promotion? Nine. How and with whom did you relax and refresh yourself from your working life? Ten. How important has your job been compared to home, family and church? And eleven. Explore what God is saying to you about your working life, past, present and future. God has trusted many people with difficult journeys through life. The amazing thing is that he is asking us to bring our stories into his and then by the work of Jesus on the cross and the Holy Spirit, he will make us whole and make the experience we've been through treasures for the kingdom that will ultimately bless us. Next time, we will learn further how to explore our stories to learn precisely where the wounds are and why we're experiencing emotional suffering in our lives. <laughs>